And so we use verbal markers. I alluded to this already. One, I use verbal markers a lot because I always have my voice. And what we do in more advanced training is frequently, I've got a leash, I've got toys, I've got food. Sometimes I have an e-collar and a remote. It's like sometimes you, you have a lot of stuff, right? So having a clicker in my hand as well takes up one of my hands. You see us play with our dogs a lot. Like I like to play tug and games with our dogs and I use my hands for that. So if I have to use a clicker, then I have to click and then drop the clicker and get, and so it's less efficient. My voice is always there. I have it with me all the time and it frees up the rest of my body. So I like using my voice as a communication tool for our, for our basic communication system. It's not necessary. And you have to try harder with your voice and you have to work harder to be more consistent with your voice, right? So one of the reasons that people advocate for clickers is one, you're not walking around the house with a clicker clicking all the time. With your voice, you're walking around talking around dogs all the time. We're talking all the time. 90% of this is not for the dog. So dogs learn to kind of tune out most of what comes out of your mouth, right? because we talk lots and it's not for them. There's actually a concept in, in dog training and behavior called learned irrelevance, right? And if I'm talking to you and my dog's sitting there, my dog has learned that none of this stuff coming out of my mouth is relevant to them, so they move it to the ignore file. That's not something I need to pay attention to, right? And so with your voice, since we talk so much, then we have to be much more consistent to make the dog attend to those sounds. That's why commands can be polluted really easily. You see this a lot in training. You get a client in with their pet dog and they've taught the dog beautifully to ignore its name, right? Fido, 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 Fido. Whatever, yeah, no. <laughs> Doesn't even blink or look up, right? So that's been moved to the ignore file. You said my name a lot. I didn't make any meaningful connections with that, so pff, move it away, right, as we go. And so you have to work a little harder with your voice. The other thing about your voice is that you're inconsistent with it. If I push a clicker, it makes the exact same sound every time. So if I'm pissed off, same click. If I'm sad, same click. If I'm elated, same click, right? So the sound is consistent all the time and it's novel to the dog. So it's easier to condition a dog to a clicker, for sure, right? So remember this as we go forward. If you're gonna use your voice, a verbal marker, which we do, Try to use it in a different tone of voice than your regular speaking voice. So I'm walking along like this, I say yes all the time, but when I am using it as a marker with my dog, I go, yes. I hiss, and I use it in a different tone of voice than my regular tone of voice, right? And, so, and then be consistent about it. Unlike the clicker, your mood affects your voice. So if you're really excited, people are going, yes, 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 right? If they're a little mellow, they're like, yes, that was good. Damn a dog, yes, right? Remember, from the dog's perspective, the, it's not words, it's sounds, right? Dog doesn't know what yes is. They know yes, or yes, or yes, or whatever you make it like, right? So from their perspective, it's just a sound. So if I vary it, they'll be less responsive, right? One of the interesting things about classical conditioning is that if you alter your conditioned reinforcer, the sound you're making a little bit, you won't get no response, you'll get a partial response. Like, there's a kind of halfway version of classical conditioning. So if I've, used, if I've gone, yes, 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 hundreds of times, and I go, yes, and it's not exactly the same, my dog will respond to that, but not with the same intensity uh, as, you, as they do to the one they're used to, they're conditioned to. So when we use verbal markers, note, try to make, make it stand out as different from your regular speaking voice, and then be as consistent as you possibly can. And if you can do those things, which you can if you practice it, then you always have your conditioned reinforcer with you. You don't have to go, where's my clicker? And you don't have to worry about that.